Hallelujah. So you begin to understand that the Lord is telling the church to prepare the wedding gown. But it's not just any wedding gown. It's the one Jesus tailor made for the church by dying at Calvary, being crucified, tortured, going on and resurrecting. And he's saying, we now need to repent and return to holiness. And it is the holiness of the church that is the fine linen and the fruit of the holy church, which is actually the fruit of repentance, brings brightness to the wedding gown. So in other words, the Lord was telling the church, keep your gown clean. In the book of Revelation, he continued, like I said, verse six, chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he that keeps his clothes on. That is the wedding gown. So he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. According to the Lord, either you have the right wedding gown or you are naked in his eyes. Hallelujah. What a sobering moment for the church. And I'm giving revelation. What is the message embedded in the wedding rings that I've been announcing for the wedding of the Lamb of God? Prepare the way the kingdom of God is near. What is the message that's embedded there to the church? And I've been announcing this. Now the Lord is saying, it also speaks of the Lord telling the church to prepare a spotless wedding gown. Because the rings are well decorated, the gown has to be glorious. And the Bible says that he is only coming for a spotless bride, a mature, glorious, and spotless bride. But when you read on, viewers, it's tremendous here. Because the rider of the white horse, he says, I saw heaven standing open, verse 11, Revelation 19, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was the white horse, whose rider is called Faith and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and his head has many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. Listen to verse 14. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Do you see the revelation the Lord is giving the church? This is talking about the white horse, the second coming of Christ, when he's coming on the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem. That is seven years after the rapture of the church. Then you begin to understand that the Lord is essentially speaking to the church through the wedding rings placed at the entrance to heaven. Again, I repeat this. You right away begin to see the revelation. You see the message that the Lord is speaking to the church of Christ by placing the two golden and glorious wedding rings at the entrance to heaven on the 1st of November 2006. Entrance to heaven, glory there. He's saying, prepare the wedding gown. Let the Holy Spirit help you to prepare a glorious gown, that means only the Holy Spirit can help the church to walk in holiness. The kind of holiness that will qualify her to wed the Lamb of God. And he's saying, after that, when you are wearing the wedding gown, fine linen, bright and clean, the holiness of the Lord, then now you can wed Christ and enter the wedding supper of the Lamb of God. But listen to this now. He's saying, even during the day of the Lord, on the second coming of Christ, it is the raptured saints, and when the raptured saints are coming from heaven with Christ, he makes one emphasis, that they are all wearing fine linen, bright and clean. In other words, the Father, by placing the wedding rings at the entrance to heaven, he emphasized the gravity, the weight, and the extreme importance 
of the wedding gown that the church prepares right now. It affects even her future when she's coming from heaven towards the day of the Lord, with the Lord, to Mount of Olives, to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So everything the church is doing today has eternal implications. That's what the Father is saying. Has eternal ramifications. You may choose to prepare the right wedding gown, go into the kingdom of God, the wedding supper of the Lamb of God, after seven years, come back with the Lord, rule for a thousand years. And be for the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Or may, you may choose to be sloppy, not caring, not prepare the right wedding gown, and miss, miss the rapture, the wedding of the Lamb. The Father, by placing the wedding rings at the entrance to heaven, and placing the responsibility on the church to prepare a spotless wedding gown proportionate with the quality of the wedding ring he has put here, essentially he has talked two things. He has emphasized the supremacy and the centrality of the Holy Spirit in the process of preparing the church for the wedding of the Lamb. Because without the Holy Spirit, she cannot measure up to the standard that the Lord is calling her to live and to enter into at this time. Hallelujah. And he has already put a lot of responsibility on the church now. Look at that now. Let us still continue with this wedding gown. The book of Zechariah chapter 3. What is the Lord saying to the church by placing the wedding rings in the sky? Hallelujah. And flipping them to show how he has designed them so beautiful, decorated them. And then we find that he's telling the church, please prepare a glorious wedding gown. That's the day my word will be accomplished. Without holiness, nobody enters heaven. Nobody will see the Lord. Zechariah chapter 3 is a very classic case of the wedding ring. He says, Verse 1, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan, and Satan standing on his right hand side to accuse him. Now all of you that are aspiring or that are already maturing as the bride of Christ, it is mature to know that the angel of the Lord is Christ Jesus. That's why you see there are other angels standing there that is giving command. That's just part of maturing as the bride of Christ. So Joshua is standing before the angel of the Lord and... Satan is standing, the accuser, on his right hand to, uh, hand to accuse him. Now listen to this. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this man not a burning stick snatched from the fire, the revive of the Holy Spirit? Look at that. Verse 3. Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. And then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sins, and I'll put, you, I'll put rich garments on you. The wedding gown, somebody. And then I said, Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these ones standing here like the other angels. Let us stop there, precious people. What does that tell you about the importance of the wedding gown? I'm talking about the message that Jehovah El Shaddai, Elohim, is sending to the church of Christ by presenting the two golden and glorious wedding rings on the 1st of November, the year 2006. He placed them, at, he opened heaven, 